Hi there, this is Michael Branson Smith. Um, now we're going to look at Visual Studio Code's um, extensions options and settings options so that you can make Visual Studio Code look and behave exactly how you'd like it to. I'm going to show you my favorite set of extensions and what they ex actually do um, to kind of showcase that I have this simple project open with this color game. So there is some JavaScript here that's working. Um, so that we'll have some JavaScript we can look at in the syntax and see how Visual Stu uh, Studio Code's extensions impact the way that's displayed. Um, so we have this index file, this HTML file, the JS file, and the CSS file. Um, and that's in the Explorer. And we're going to close that. And we're going to look at the extensions. And you can see there are installed and recommended. Right now, there are 14 installed extensions. I'm going to go through about 10 of them. Um, a lot of them are a little bit redundant, but I'm just going to walk through some of the important ones. The important ones I'm going to show you are Beautify. First, we're going to look at Beautify and Prettier Now and how these function to clean up your code on Save. All right. Um, Beautify existed first and is incredibly popular and it formats your code as you save it. So, for example, um, and it works with HTML. So if I make a change, let's uh, collapse this for a moment. And let's say we make a you know new circle, right? Let's say there's a div dot, we'll say dot circle inner, right? Oops. And it saves that. Let's shift the tabs over and we save it you can see it move immediately moves it back all right so it notes where html child and parent relationships are and fixes them um, as well as in javascript it makes a number of corrections as well but we're going to look at those once we make an adjustment so prettier now though is also does similar corrections but I think it does a better job with JavaScript and CSS, but they interfere with one another. And so to fix that, we need to actually go into the settings. All right, so we would command comma or go to settings from the gear. And we're going to search for beautify. And we're gonna search for beautify language right here. And we're gonna edit this settings in the JSON file, right? Settings.json file. And it's going to get confusing, but click away for a second. And you're going to see it recommend, these are, your default settings should look something like this. Um, and what's important is we only want this HTML to be enacted. And so the JavaScript we don't and the CSS we don't. And so what we're going to do is we're going to leave this empty. All right. And it's like, basically, if you know with this data structure, this is an empty array. So I'm gonna actually even just copy it with the comma after it. And I'm gonna copy it, Command C, and I'm gonna replace this entire block, this object here of code. So it looks like this, all right? So these are brackets, all right? So these are empty arrays. So no longer is Beautify going to affect my JavaScript and CSS, and that's what I prefer. And just so you know how I've made that setting. And so to see an example of what that looks like, so we'll close this. And so in JavaScript, um, let's say I did not have semicolons where they should be in a variety of places, right? And I save it. You can see all those semicolons were returned. If I um, have some indenting off, same thing, and I save it, it fixed the indenting. So it's easier to track what functions inside of another function. Okay, the color coding we're going to get into that has to do with something else. So and the same thing with uh, the CSS. Right, if I were to put these on a single line, these comma separated uh, selectors and save it, it's gonna put them in a line. And it's gonna do a bunch of other things too, okay? So the last thing to recognize is every time I hit Command S or save or file save, these 
are being enacted, the beautifier or the prettier now code update. And that's due to a setting, all right? So we, uh, as well, and so we're gonna look at one of those. So we're gonna search for on save, all right? And you can see this one on save. We wanna make sure that this is checked, it's unchecked. This change that I did before and save it, notice nothing's happening. But if I check it back off and I'm going to save something on it in the settings palette, because we don't have to uh, open the config file, and I save it and now it's fixed. Okay, so that's Beautify and Prettier Now. And I'm going to list all of these extensions. So those are two very, very important things. I would say most important one is the use of um, live server. Oh, wait, one more thing. Let's show how it works when you install. And when you want to install, let's uninstall Beautify, all right? And it says reload required. So if you want to uninstall something, we click reload. And now in my installed extensions, Beautify is not at the top anymore. So if you have none, you can type Beautify. It's going to recommend it. You can install here or here. So we installed it. And now it's installed. Sometimes it might again ask you to refresh. So that's the basics of looking at. We want to see what's installed, what's recommend, re recommended. I'm recommending a whole bunch of stuff for you right now. These are fine. Uh, so let's go on and look at some more. So bracket pair colorizer 2. What does this do? Well, this is really good in JavaScript when you are looking to track where the opening and closing uh, block is for say a particular function or a loop, something like that. So you can see this is a, this function reset is very complicated. Open closes with this blue. Oh, it's off right now. This is good. So notice that bracket pair colorizer, everything's white or blue. So it's actually off. So we must have disabled it. Oh, what happened? Mm, well, let's reinstall it. Let's uninstall, reload, All right? Let's say bracket pair colorizer. We want two, we'll install. There we go. And now, I don't know why it turned off, but now you can see that if we look at this reset function, it open and closes with yellow, but then you can see within any function, we have purple for purple, blue for blue, yellow for yellow. So it kind of helps you keep track of where things are opening and closing, blue for blue, yellow for yellow, even for the difference. So whether it's brackets or parentheses or a curly bracket, it's trying to help you track where your code is with the colorizer. Uh, next we have, let's go to installed. Color highlight is a very simple um, extension that is useful primarily in CSS. And basically, whenever you type a color, it's going to highlight it with that color. All right. And it allows you to then, then change it if you want to as well. Okay. So you can go into here and make things a little off white. All right. And save. Okay, and so that's very nice. Um, the rest are a bunch of themes. So we have community material theme, all right? Material icon theme, material theme, and material theme icons. I don't remember honestly which or which. I'll list them all. One I think installs another, but regardless, these are what allows you to change the look of things right now. You're, you're, this color scheme, as well as the background color, is due to picking a theme. So once you've installed them, you can go to this color theme or command K, command T. And right now I have community material theme, high comics. You can see if they pick different ones. You'll see all the different looks that I can have for my browser. I'm sorry, for my uh, text editor. I'm going to leave it back to the one I like right here. 
And as well as the icons, those are what affects the look of these. Because icons, if we go through here and we go to file icon theme and we change that, you can see that the icons, actually we can say no icons, right? Let's make this bigger so it's even easier to see. So there's no icons next to them, all right? Um, and then there's my own change. That's the default set right here. All right, for Visual Studio Code. And I've just gotten used to the material theme icons, right? Um, next, we have installed. Uh, you don't need to work with React right now, but HTML, CSS support, this is practical. What is nice about this is it helps uh, the HTML recognize CSS files that are attached to it. So let's say we have this game class and we're gonna make another class called .game-layout, right? For some reason we need this new class and it's gonna have a different background color, right? And it's gonna be red. So this, this class exists and I need to use it in the HTML. And the cool thing is I could say, I have to put it up here and I'm gonna make an H2 and I'm gonna start suggesting uh, game, and you can see game layout, which I just created is su suggested, right? And oh, I don't know why that happens. There we go. And now I get to use that class. I don't have to type it out. So it will auto sense classes from one document to another as long as they're linked, okay? Um, so live server. Live server is a very popular uh, tool that allows you to make changes to your code and see them live. So we got to go back to see this. So live server, once it's installed, we can, instead of navigating for this file and opening it, I don't even know where it is, but let's say I wanted to open a file and I could go to the desktop and I could go to one of these files that are here, not this one. Um, and I can open something and you could see the code and then I can make a change and then it would show up here but i don't want to have to keep hitting the refresh button live server basically opens an instance of a server on your computer and allows it to automatically refresh whenever you save the document so what i do is i want to make sure i'm in say the html file and i can either click go live or command lo on a mac so i'll say command lo and you can wait a second and now you can see that it's open all right, and it's open and it no longer shows the file pathway, it shows this server address. So it's acting like a server and serving up these files. And if I make a change, so if I put SAMP, um, let's see, easier, and I save it, you can see now it's easier. And the colors are changing because that's the JavaScript, it's dynamic, right? And if I change it easy and save, and again, it changes it. So live server allows you to work uh, a little more quickly and keep seeing changes as you just say what happened. And, um, the browser. Let's see, what else? Remote SSH, no, we're not gonna use it. SCSS, if you're on design two, and we're gonna be working with SAS, SCSS intelligence. It's very similar to the HTML, CSS support, recognize files that are connected. And the last one I want to show you, so we did see some themes and icons, but the last one is if you want to add your own and change and update your font, all right? And that is not done through extensions. Uh, the way that is done is actually taking a font, installing it on your, one of my favorite ones. Uh, and then we, code editors use what are called models fonts that every character takes up an equal amount of space. There's no kerning or tracking for the L's take up less space so that the space between an L, L and a, a, between the C and the A's is less because it's a narrower uh, letter. That doesn't happen with monospace fonts and it makes them easier to read, uh, text easier to read for developers. And one of my favorite ones is called Victor Mono. So you can Google it, go to the GitHub pages for it. You can download it and just download it. Um, and then we show this online, but we can't 
you can install on Windows, I can't remember which, which so Windows font default would be font type, font file type. And you can look at the, which one you should use. Um, gosh, here we goes. It's gonna encourage a true type font or an OFT font, whereas on a Mac, Mac default font type, all right, font file type. Here we go. And you also can use true type fonts. And I think, I don't remember all my, oh, this is a 2003 article. So it's not even worried about. So basically you install the font, right? And you can select all of them, right? And then on a Mac, you just select them all and then command open, command O to open them. And it will open the font book and you'll see them installed. And I'll show you how they are installed. I'm not going to reinstall them. There's Victor Mono, and you can see all the different versions. And so they exist. Okay. So on a Mac, this is well known. You can Google how to do it on Windows. All right. So you install the font, and then within again settings, we go back to settings, and this time we'll type font. And you can see there the default font Victor Mono is listed first. And then the backups are Monaco, Courier New, and then any mono, other mono space font. And so by just typing Victor Mono, so if I remove this, all right, and I don't even have to save it, you can see I'm now looking at uh, Monaco. If I remove Monaco, you can see now I'm looking at Courier New. So the, the fonts immediately change, but if I go back to my Victor Mono, you can see I'm back to my Victor Mono. And it has these cursive fonts that are ligatures. There's a couple things to note that are important. That, so for example, if I do a greater than and equal, so less than, so less than, and then I type equal, it's gonna combine them into the true less than equal to symbol. So be careful with that as you're first learning uh, JavaScript that that is not a single character that is less than and equal to side by side. So for example, if I get rid of that font, Victor Mono again, you can see the actual less than equal sign. So realize that's actually two characters, not one. And it's my fancy little font of Victor uh, Mono that's combining that those two characters to make more traditional looking less than equal to symbols. So that's something to be mindful of um, when working with a font like this and in your first learning to type JavaScript, all right? So within the settings and font, you can also change the font size. You can make things bigger, all right? You'll see things are suddenly much bigger. I keep it at 16 unless I'm displaying to demo something. And you can change other things. But also other things that are useful is we're gonna look at uh, what's something called word wrap, all right? Right now, word wrap is selected, all right? Or no, it's on right here, word wrap. We want it on. If we turn it to off, all right, and we go to, um, we're gonna have to mess this up. Let's create a paragraph with morum ipsum in it, morum. And hit return, you can see that the, the font, the text just went all the way around, right? But if we have word, uh, just one all the way across, it didn't wrap to the next line based on the size of the window. But if I turn it back on, all right, and I go back, you can see now it's fitting within the width of the window. So word wrap, one to turn on, okay? And I think that's enough. And so good luck with customizing Visual Studio Code.